So, why are we out this late anyway? The tar resources haven't been seen all day in their enclosure, and HQ told us to check it out. Why am I out here and not your normal driver? He's on sick leave. Let's just get this over with. Do you see anything? <sighs> Nothing. It's not hard to find a 30-foot-tall dinosaur. You want to do this? No, I'm good in the car. I'd prefer not to get eaten, thank you. Wait, I, I, I see something. I, I think it's a tail? Well, is it a tail or not? I don't know. Let's get in closer. Ugh, I don't get paid enough for this. Nothing. I swear I saw something. Well, on the bright side, the fence seems to be intact, so they couldn't have gotten out. So, that means they're in here with us. Uh, and I don't think they like us being here. Let's get out of here. You don't have to tell me twice. There's got to be a better way to check if the dinosaurs are in their pens. Yeah, we should probably propose that idea to HQ. Agreed. Let's head there now before they give us something else to do. What is up my fellow dino peoples of the world? Welcome back to episode 3 of Dinotopia. Today we will be focusing on making the park look a bit more visually pleasing, we will be focusing on the hotel district, and adding the Tarbosaurus enclosure. And also as well, finally adding different dinosaur species into the petting zoo. We will be starting with the hotels. Basically, um, during episode 2 I added the hotels, but I never really did anything with them. Today is me adding a bit more visually pleasing stuff. So I added amenities, I added a golf course, I also was adding basically um, just like a, a hangout area next to the waterfall to kind of give like a, I don't know, give guests kind of a nice place to relax after they've just seen some bloodthirsty dinosaurs. And basically, yeah, I just spent a long time just trying to get this to look really nice. I think I did a pretty decent job. However, in a little bit you'll <laughs> in a little bit you'll see why I sound a little bit irritated from uh, from that. Basically, I added a lake and just because I don't know, I just figured like this is kind of like a resort, I guess you could say. So I wanted to kind of make it give like that same feel, kind of similar to like a water park hotel or like just etc. Just stuff like that. Just a hotel that pretty much is right next to a lake. So I just thought it'd be really nice. I then basically started customizing the amenities. I basically was deciding to go with gourmet steak for the food, and I believe milkshakes for the uh, for the drinks. Because I don't know who doesn't want a milkshake when they're uh, <laughs> when they're in the middle of uh, I don't know relaxing. I guess who doesn't want a milkshake? After that, I began starting to fill in a little bit of space with kind of like a small little, um, winding path, just because. I don't know, I just thought it looked really nice to have a winding path that go that goes like that basically skims along the lake. Kinda like a one a shortcut and two just kinda like a nice luxurious walk to go through. 
Then I started adding a few more details to the actual hotel walkway. It's not that major. I basically just added trash cans and that's pretty much it. And then I realized there was a massive error in my path design, which I had to delete nearly half of the, <laughs> of the um, stuff that I put there just to be able to fix it. And oh boy, did I hate doing that. So yeah, then I put everything back and I pretty much like, I remember what it looked like so it wasn't that difficult to put everything back. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what summed up the hotel district area. After that, I began kind of starting to add more uh, I don't know, I guess nice looking things to the park, I guess to like any big area I'd want to add just like stuff to look at. Because one thing I like about building parks is the fact that like you have to, I mean, not in reality the guests aren't going to care because they're just much of code that's saying that like walk in a certain direction. But I'd, feel, I'd like to take into perspective of if I'm at this park, what's going to make me want to go to this area? And usually it's going to be stuff that either looks nice or interesting. So I tried to add a few, like, things like the middle areas to make it look interesting. And then I began adding our main attraction, the Tarbosaurus. It, the Tarbosaurus, I don't know, I just always liked that species, because it was just, I don't know, it was just interesting. And I also watched a documentary about them, like, a while ago. And for their pen, I decided to do something that I regret to this day. I triple layered the fence to, one, make it look nice, and two... So that's gonna be really hard for them to escape. <laughs> and oh boy, do I regret doing that. That make that takes up like most of this recording. It was just me building that fence because it was just such a pain to do. But I don't regret it because it does look really nice. So I will say, like that's that was probably a really good decision. I saw this on a video like a while ago. Like this was like where yeah, you could triple layer the fence and it gives like a kind of like a reinforced concrete fence kind of look and it works it looks really nice so I 100% recommend you check this out I mean I don't know if, like I recommend you give it a try on your guys's parks because personally I like it it's a pain to do but it's, I don't know to me it's worth it because it just looks visually pleasing and like I don't know it just it makes sense for the type of species I'm putting in here because while in the game Tarbosaurus isn't really well, I mean it's not really really Basically, I don't know, Tarbosaurus just seems like a species that needs a fence like this. Same thing with Tyrannosaurus, Spinosaurus, even Albertosaurus. Just species like that just seems like something where they need a fence like this. Because otherwise, well, I mean, they're going to break out of a concrete fence. If, like, th this is Jurassic Revolution. So, of course they're going to do that. Yeah, so then I started to... I elevated one of the parts to give, like, kind of a nice-looking viewing platform. I kind of fixed the uh, river to make it so I could easily make everything look nice while also continuing the reinforced fence kind of look and it works um but yeah the the ways that i set up the um tarver source to be viewed aren't necessarily anything special i basically just did the same thing that jurassic world did with the tyrannosaurus where i have a regular viewing gallery and then i have the uh, log viewing gallery because i thought that'd be pretty cool to kind of do that Yeah, I spent way too long just trying to figure out how to make the path double, like, double length. I don't really know. There's not really a good way to say that. But, like, yeah, just make it so, like, the path looked nice. I even made it so it went through the river that I made. I'm still going to keep that river as long as I can because I like that. It's a nice um, island feel, which is kind of like what I was going for for this park. I wanted to make it be, like, tropical or just... Just nice looking, you know? And then I added a Spinosaurus fountain, because it's the closest thing that makes sense to like, oh yeah, a carnivore would be here then. Then I obviously a triple reinforced the fence to make it look nice, and also kind of just to scare the guests a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I spent way too long just trying to make sure everything was all set up, because, uh, oh boy, this was a pain. And then I've decided that, like, for the river at least, I'm just gonna leave it as, like, regular fence. Cause, uh, it, cause if rivers, if a water's running through, there, it clearly isn't a concrete fence. And besides, these fences aren't electrified, so it's not like we have to worry about being, like, 100% realistic. Doing the viewing gallery specifically was a bit of a pain, cause I had to, cause, yeah, as you can see, 
I have to fight with the game to make it so it's like it's straight instead of being angled like it normally would be. But there's like a certain so like sweet spot where if you hold it at that position, it will not, um, it'll not curve. It'll just go straight. And uh, yeah, oh man, the fence. The gate as well was a bit of a pain to add, but I got it eventually. And then <laughs> the funny thing is by the end of this, like once it gets like the back part of the fence for like, no, no one's gonna see it. So basically just like, you know what, screw it. I'm not triple wearing the back part. It's probably not a good safety thing to do, but I'm not spending this entire recording just working on a fence. <laughs> I get a hole included, but not a fence. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not spending all that time working on a fence. <laughs> I basically just filled it in with just regular concrete, and that pretty much called the fence a day, and pretty much the enclosure was basically done at that stage. Yeah, I really, yeah, I added like a few trees to cover up the uh, concrete, the regular concrete, just so the guests thought, like, just so people could think, oh, this is completely reinforced at all sides. Nope. <laughs> That's not the case at all. Then I added the, uh, I finally got to add the Tarvasaurus, I basically weighed just a little bit just to get it ready. And then I just added, um, kind of just gave myself just a bit of a look as to, like, what everything was about. And then I added the Tarbosaurus. By the way, actually, speaking of which, um, I'm thinking of actually starting to name these dinosaurs. Like, all the, like, the Dryosaurus, Homalocephale, Lystrosaurus, um, Carithosaurus, Diplodocus, Styracosaurus, etc. Ceratosaurus, Tarbosaurus, all of those species. I've been thinking about naming them, and I want you guys in the comments to, like, I know like, you guys don't really like commenting on my videos, but please, uh, for this time, come, uh, help me with some name suggestions, because, like, I just, I don't know, there's a lot of dinosaurs in this park, I can't, like, really think of, like, good names for all of them, so if you guys have any cool name suggestions, please let me know. Yeah, that I start to kind of spruce up the, uh, the Jurassic tour that I made, and then we start to add the Homolocephale, the Dryosaurus, and the Lystrosaurus to the, uh, to the petting zoo. I still don't know why I love making petting zoos. I think it's just like, it, I, it's probably come down to the conclusion where it's just like, I just like adding cute dinosaurs into a park. That's just like my personal joy to do. And yeah, and then after that, basically just, uh, just kept trying to add a few more just aesthetics to the place to make it look nice and also just make sense for like a park standard where it's just like, you want to kind of signify where are the carnivores, where are the herbivores, etc. Just make attractions look attracting to go to, you know? And yeah, pretty much I just waited here, just waiting for the homolocephale and Dryosaurus and all them just to get here. And yeah, that took a long time because like, we only had like two helicopters to work with. So it, it, yeah, it was going to suck. I, I knew that from the get go. And then, yeah, I just tried to view the Tarbosaurus from there. I mean, from what I could tell, it has, like, a lot of view and, like, visibility, which is really nice. And then, yeah, I don't know, just, I still like the Tarbosaurus. Like, in this game specifically, I prefer it to the Tyrannosaurus, at least when it comes to looks. Because the Tarbosaurus just looks threatening, and even its roar is terrifying. Because, like, it rarely ever does it, so you know that when it does roar, it's terrifying. At least in my opinion, at least. I started adding more shelters everywhere just to make sure everything was covered, and of course, more bathrooms, because, uh, well, I mean, what's a park without restrooms every, like, 10 feet? <laughs> or 10 miles, depending on where you go. Yeah, then I figured, while the Dryosaurus and Hamala stuff, while the animals were getting here, I figured I might as well add a, a, a um, Avery somewhere in the park. Because, uh, I don't know, I kind of wanted to add, like, some kind of flying creature. That will probably be shown next episode, actually, where I add the flying, where I add more of the, like, flying species. I spent forever just trying to figure out how to get the viewing galleries to line up. I moved the river so many times in the series, it's not even funny. Yeah, then basically just linked up the path, and I'm pretty sure by this point all the... Um, all the petting zoo animals were already added, or at least I believe all of them were. I know Dryosaurus was starting to be added by this point. But yeah, just basically just made it look nice, made everything kind of fit with the park. A lot of paleo trees, etc. Even added a hatchery over there. And that basically summed up uh, most of this recording. So, 
yeah, I guess if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Look forward to more episodes in the future. And this is Jurassic Beast signing off. See you guys next time.